first time in here and I'm roped into a tasting. What a mug. I'm a wine mug. Malbec. Bet I won't taste a thing. Chili is what most people think about when they... Oh, about. I can. Oh, it's delicious. It's perfect. No, no, stupid man. Now she's got me. She'll say it's 30 quid a bottle and I have to buy a case. Not bad for 5 99 Under six quid. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Majestic wine. Come and explore. Many of you will be thinking about the foods you'll be serving over the holiday season, but for me as a wine educator, this is the time of year when I get to have the most fun with wine. Now I'm lucky enough to have Angela Hartnett cooking my Christmas lunch for me. So I'm going to do something very different rather than the normal what we do, smoked salmon, turkey, etc. So we're going to have a fantastic pumpkin soup with some mm. roasted Scottish scallops. Then we've got a roasted ribeye of beef. And then to finish off, we're going to do uh, winter fruit pavlova. So poached fruits in syrup and spices. Mm. So let's match the wines. Oh, I'm going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> I've chosen pumpkin soup as a starter. Pumpkins are in season, full of flavour, and matched with scallops. It's an amazing dish. So, cumin's in there. We're just going to cover it now with a bit of stock, just enough to um, cover the soup. You know, bring it up to the boil and simmer, not too slowly, rather, sort of a little bit of a rapid, so it cooks quickly and we retain all the flavour, and then we'll blitz that afterwards. Take our scallops, and then you start to turn it over. Chopped chestnuts, just some parmesan shavings. Now in terms of matching a wine with that, there's quite a lot of ingredients that have the, a kind of umami flavour, the mm. sort of a, a very savoury character. I've got two wines here. One is a, a sort of a lovely fresh unoaked um, Arnais from um, Piemonte in Italy, which uh, I'm 100% sure you'll, you'll, <laughs> uh, you'll enjoy. Here you've got sort of lovely fresh fruit, a little bit of herbal flavour, um, enough intensity to stand up to, uh, to this dish quite young isn't it? I it's mean, relatively young. Yeah. yeah so it's young and fresh, um, vibrant. I think it works with it for me because oh. of the mineral side mm. to it because you I know for me it counteracts a lot. We said pumpkin scallop quite sweet and everything. Well the other wine that I chose it's one of my favourite Christmas wines just because it's so ridiculously hedonistic. This is Condria from the Northern Rhone um, oh, from one I of the top producers, um, Cuilleron. So here I'm looking at the, the sort of the velvety texture of the soup and yeah. hopefully we'll have a wine that's got some of the richness to stand up to that. Right, yeah. let's have a bit of the soup. It does have that sweetness at the end, doesn't mm, it? Which, mm. um, which not everyone which will not like. Which not my, t but yeah. I can see why it works. My favourite is this only because I like drier crispier yeah, wines yeah, yeah. but I think the match works very well with that. So we're going to cook a rib of beef. Everyone moans about turkey, I don't mind it but some people want something different. Make sure it's great quality, I think that's the secret to any good meat. You've got this natural fat on top and that is where all your flavour is and what you want to do is sear all that off so all those juices start to come out and develop and then you're going to roast the beef in the oven. So I've got a hot tray on the stove, I'm going to season it with lots of black pepper. Lovely bit of rock salt, straight on there like that. We're going to remove that after, put it in here so it's a bit deeper. And we're going to put some veg around it and then roast it in the oven. Potato boulangere is quite a classic French potato dish. So it's basically layers of roasted down onions, nicely caramelised and then with layers of potato covered with um, stock, you know, and because we've the beef is quite rich and we don't want the potatoes too rich, we're going to use the chicken stock to cook them, but keep the lovely roasting flavours of the beef as well. So saute those off. Ideally, to slice the potatoes, you need a mandolin, and you basically want the potatoes nicely, thinly sliced. With the potatoes, we're going to season, because what we're going to do is mix it all with the onions, Put it straight in a tray to bake it, covered it with stock and a bit of butter. So that's going to go straight in the oven as well. So the final thing to have with our beef is some fantastic Cavallo Nero that's in season now. And then we're going to roast off some onions so they're beautifully slow roasted and they've got fantastic flavours. The thing about the salt is that it makes this dish very flattering for a very wide range of red wines. Mm. Um, it, what it tends to do is it'll soften the tannins make the wine seem yeah. a little bit less bitter and acidic and it'll bring out the fruit. So the first one that I've chosen is the one where, if I wasn't really worrying too much about the budget, this wine, if you taste it on its own, 
um, you'll see that the tannins are quite firm. Mm. Um, it's quite astringent. Um, and it's, it's got a, a bit of an austerity. There's some ripeness of fruit. You know, there's good intensity of flavour, but it's quite an austere wine. You smell lots of, yeah, you can smell the tannins, but lots of blackberries, rich fruit. It comes into its own once you put it with food, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Mm. The, the richness of texture of the potatoes, that's quite flattering to wines as well. So yeah, the, I think it you've, works you've got quite well. a nice combination mm. here. Mm -hmm. So the next one? Then, well, the next one is from um, warmer growing conditions um, in Argentina. It's a, it's a Malbec. Right. So lower in acid, lower in tannin, softer, riper tannins, but still with the same kind of dark fruit that should stand up to the intensity of flavour in, in mm. the dishes here. That seems much lighter in flavour, slightly mm. sweeter, right? Eh? Yeah, but you, you can taste the difference in price yeah, between yeah, the yeah. two wines. Yes, definitely, yeah. So, easy thing, straight in a mixer, you add your egg whites and you start to um, whisk those up. Now we're going to add our sugar into it. So in here what we have is we've got a sugar and water and then I've added some spices and seasonings and that's going to become our poaching liquor for our fruits which we're then going to use in our pavlova. Flatten it down slightly and then all that's going to do is go in a very low oven and then you cook it until it really is crispy. Might be slightly um, lightly brown in colour and then you've got this lovely sort of caramelised crunchiness in it. These are going to be our fruits for our pavlova. So I've got some lovely dried figs there, some dried apricots as well. And all we're going to do is infuse them with the pickling liquid. And then the final thing is we're going to add some pears into here. So ideally what you want is everyone to have a little bit of each piece of fruit. And then finally, a few hazelnuts on top. I think there's, there's something that we might have a little bit of a, a disagreement on. <laughs> um, I mean, what, What's your opinion on serving champagne with, uh, with desserts like well, this? Well, I quite like it, but partly because I like um, acidity and freshness, you know, yeah. and I could drink that throughout the whole meal. You know, and it's a palate preference, but it is, you know, fresh, crispy is what I like. The sweet wines I like are the ones that have freshness yeah. and acidity and, and aren't too sweet. And I think at least one of these... I'm going to like. I hope. I believe. <laughs> please. I'm sure I will. <laughs> we'll, we'll start with the one that's less sweet. This yep. is a, a late harvest Sauvignon from, uh, mm. from New Zealand. And the lovely thing about this is you've got the, the acidity from the Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. Um, and the way it's been fermented, it, most of the sugar has been fermented out, so it's not too sweet. Let's try this together. I think if it was much drier than this, what mm. would happen is that the sugar in the, in the dessert would make mm. the wine... So too yeah. austere and too yeah. too acidic, mm. but again, that depends on your your palate preferences. No, but I think that works. And then you've also okay. got the acidity in here mm. balancing against yeah. the richness. And then the other wine is a little bit sweeter. Yeah. Not a huge amount sweeter. Um, and whereas the first one is late harvest, this is made from grapes that have been dried right. after they've been harvested. So, so you can see the colour straight away, more sherry. Yeah, a little bit exactly, it? a little bit of um, oxidation on the grapes yeah. before they were pressed and fermented. So this is a technique that's really used a lot in Italy. Yeah. This wine happens to come from South Africa, it's the Rustenberg. And then there's kind of dried fruit apricot flavours which are sort of reflected mm. in the dish. But my preference I think is for the, the Sauvignon. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind this actually. I'm surprised because I never would normally do that. But I say as long as I think it works with something I can mm. go with that. Well that was fantastic Anthony, thank you. I think we matched very well. Thank you. So it worked very well and uh, our alternative Christmas lunch rather than turkey and everything else, isn't yeah. it? Perfect. And good wines. Well, I've really enjoyed it. Thank <laughs> you.